If you're looking to buy a stacked NBA 2K account with max badges and more, visit SportsTMB.com. He has been in the community for years and has hundreds of reviews. Click the first link in the description to get your account today. So the Phoenix Suns have been pretty disappointing lately after having a pretty decent start for what they were expected to be. Most people going into this season, including myself, viewed their offseason as a failure and thought that this Suns team would not get much better than they currently are. I think people expected marginal improvement, especially with the addition of Ricky Rubio, but no one expected them to be a 500 team and be in the playoff race, especially in the deep Western Conference, and with how they'd performed in the past and this franchise just overall being kind of a dumpster fire. The Suns started off 11-12, and and they were in the 7th to 8th seed pretty much for the first couple a month in the NBA. Now they're 11 and 20 as they have lost eight straight games, including last night, a loss to the Warriors where they were outscored by, I believe, almost 20 points in the fourth quarter by this Warriors team without Steph Clay. And I believe Draymond didn't even play, but I don't care enough to look that up. So if he did, well, good for them. Still, the Suns team, for what it was believed to be, should be beating that Warriors team who have been the worst team in the NBA. The reason they started off so good was Ricky Rubio and his playmaking and defensive and overall just stability at the point guard. The biggest problem with the Suns last year was a lack of playmaking. They kind of forced Devin Booker into that role, which is not what he's naturally good at. He got to seven assists per game, but the Suns offense did not flow well and... Booker was still putting up numbers, but the offense was not great overall, and it wasn't really going anywhere. And I think the addition of Rubio was viewed pretty positively, albeit the contract being a little bit high. But then again, if you're the Suns, who else are you really signing? So Ricky Rubio made an improvement. But then the surprise guy was Aaron Baines, who was and still is having a career year. Uh, but as of late, he's slowed down a lot, and it's looked more like, has he actually been that great, or has he just been given more opportunity? Kelly Oubre was averaging 17 points per game. He did that last year with the Suns, but that was in a very brief amount of games, I believe 20 or so, so there was a good reason to believe that that wouldn't hold up, but it has. He's shooting 44%, not shooting well for three, from three. He was shooting 35% for most of the season, but it's gone down to 31%. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then Devin Booker was having the best season of his career. He was averaging 25 points and shooting 50, 40, 90. That's some hot shooting right there, and this Suns team overall had some really hot shooting. Aaron Baines, who is seen as a guy who can sometimes hit a three-pointer if he's left wide open, was bombing three-pointers from downtown, shooting five attempts per game, and shooting around 40%. He has a very funky-ass looking jump shot, but it was going in, and he was also playing great defense, rebounding a little bit. Um, you know, just being the role player that he was in Boston and teams prior, but he was just doing it a lot better with this Phoenix Suns team, stepping up in the absence of DeAndre Ayton. And then again, Kelly Oubre was playing well, and some of their supporting pieces that they brought in free agency were respectable enough. But now, I think the biggest problem with the Suns team was that so much of it was based on some hot shooting. Now they are shooting the ball poorly. Over the last eight games, Oubre is shooting 28% from three. After shooting 35% for most of the year, Oubre's never been a great three-point shooter, but I definitely think he's better than 28%. Booker has missed three of the last eight games, with those eight games being the losses I was talking about. But in the five that he played, he shot 42% from the field and 10% from three. And he was just averaging 19 points per game after averaging 25 for most of the year. Baines went from shooting 43% from three to 24% in these last eight games. So I think what's really happening here is a cold streak and you could chalk that up to well, oh, you know, there's just some poor shooting. They'll turn it around and they'll get back to what they were. But one, this is the Western Conference, so it's not quite as simple as that because a couple game losing streak can really just drop you out of the playoffs, even if you're a decent NBA team. And then more importantly, was it really that cold? of shooting or were they just shooting really hot to start the year? Because 
I like Devin Booker, but I don't think he is a normally 50, 40, 90 type of guy. Aaron Baines does not normally shoot 43% from three on five attempts per game. That was an abnormal, abnormal, I can't say that word. That was an abnormality. Fuck it. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then there were other guys who were hitting their threes as well. Uh, Cam Johnson, who I criticized that draft pick, has shot well from three. And I still criticize that draft pick because of where they drafted him, not that they drafted him. And then there's also been trouble with the backup point guard spot. Ty Jerome and uh, Javon Carter are both shooting below 40%. Uh, Javon Carter really only brings you defense, and that's pretty much it. Shoots respectively from three, but that's whatever, considering how low his attempts are. And then Eli Okobo is like, he's fine, but I definitely would rather have a lot of different players as my backup point guard. Like, he shoots all right. He plays respectable enough defense. He's big, so he can play both guard positions, but, you know, he's not great. Uh... And then overall, the depth with this team is not amazing. Mikhail Bridges has regressed this year, in my opinion. Uh, he's shooting just 31% from three, and he's taking two a game. Uh, his defense has been pretty much the same as it was last year when you would hope for some improvement because last year he showed signs of being a really good defender. And he was shooting four threes a game. Now he's down to just two, and the minute difference isn't enough to justify that drop in attempts. So he's not taking many threes, and he's not making them. And he was touted as a 3 and D guy going into the NBA. So if all he has on the defense is the defense, he's basically playing like Avery Bradley right now. Dario Saric is playing all right. Uh, I don't think he should be starting. I think uh, Cam Johnson starting with uh, Kelly Oubre at power forward would be a better, more versatile lineup. But he does his job. He's shooting 34% from three, which is not great, but it's all right. Grabbing seven rebounds. That's another issue that's persisted with this Suns team with the absence of DeAndre Ayton. And Frank Kaminsky is hitting some of his three-pointers. Uh, that's about it. But I think what was most important, or one of the, outside of the hot shooting, what was most important for this Suns team was their improved defense and their teamwork as a whole was really good. But it seems like their early season success can really just be attributed to some hot shooting. Of course, those defensive improvements and them just seeming like more of a unit is definitely something to be, you know, given credit for. I think ultimately this was just some hot shooting. Now the question is, can the Suns turn this around? Well, looking at an 11 and 20 record, it's definitely not going to be easy to get this team in the playoffs, if even possible. With the way that the West has been this year, even though I did kind of, you know, comment on the cliche earlier, the West has been a little bit weaker this year. There's been a lot of below 500 teams in the playoffs in the Western Conference, which is not something we've had in a while. I just think this has been part of, you know, a lot of teams having a worse start than was anticipated, like the... Uh, Utah Jazz, who obviously have a positive record, but after I made a video on them, they lost like five games. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers sucking, the Kings sucking, uh, the Spurs I anticipated, but most people did not. The Minnesota Timberwolves have also fallen off, and that might be a video in itself. But they are the 13th seed, but there and there is a 10% win difference between... Uh, the Blazers and the Suns and the Blazers are the eighth seed currently. So it is a very steep hill to climb. It's not impossible, but the Suns cannot afford anything even remotely in the same vein as the losing streak that they just had. You can't lose eight straight games again and expect to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. There are still 50 games in this season so they can turn it around. They would have to be a decent bit above 500. I think they'd have to win like 60 plus percent of their games uh, to be around 500 as a whole. 
And if I had to guess, I would say that this team is unfortunately probably in the lottery again. This team showed a lot of positive signs to open the year, but I think people overreacted a little bit to some of their hot shooting. And that's not me criticizing people because I did the same exact thing. I very much believed in this Suns team being a playoff team because I felt like they came together as a unit and were like, enough is enough. We're going to stop being terrible. But it doesn't seem like enough was enough because they're still pretty fucking terrible. And it's unfortunate because I enjoyed this Suns team. Aaron Baines fan account on Twitter is amazing to see with Aaron Baines having a great year. Devin Booker is a player that I've always liked and I've always rooted for and I've always defended. Even though I do think some people overreact to his potential. But he is a t player who can be on a winning team and I think he showed that to open the season but unfortunately this Suns team is not it the actual personnel on this roster is not that amazing they have very little bench depth the one hope that you can have for these upcoming 50 games is that DeAndre Ayton comes in and has a great sophomore year but if he's pretty much what he was as a rookie that's not going to happen that's not going to be enough, I think, to put this team over the edge and for them to go on a big winning streak. There is a case to be made that Ricky Rubio could bring the best out of DeAndre Ayton, but in the two-game, obviously, small sample size that he has gotten, his stats were nothing spectacular. We'll see how that plays out, and maybe that pick-and-roll duo can start getting this Suns team some wins. But as I said... Ultimately, I expect this team to be in the lottery again, and I expect by the season's end that Devin Booker will ask for a trade. So for a minute there, it looked like being a Suns fan would be awesome, but uh, back down to reality, I suppose. Back down to reality with me and all the Bulls fans, so yeah. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the after music.